All right, everyone. We're going to do um, section 7.4, systems of nonlinear equations. So we're not going into chapter 7. We just do this one section after chapter 9. Um, I just want to say good job to everybody for getting through conics. I know it was kind of tough, but everyone did a great job, and I'm really proud of everybody. So again, we're just doing this one section in, in, uh, in chapter 7, and then we're going to go into chapter 10. But we do this one little section, and I'm going to tell you why. It's systems of nonlinear equations. So an assist, uh, a system of equations is two equations or, or more. So let's say we have like y equals x plus 1 and y equals like 2x minus 2. So you saw this in Algebra 1 where basically you would have two equations and they would either intersect, not intersect, or coincide. And you would basically get a solution. So you would use either substitution or elimination. So let's just say if you had one like this, I'm just making these up as I go here. Let's say you had a line like this and then a line like this. The solution would be right here, right where they, right where they intersect. If you had something like this, there would be no solution. That's what you did in Algebra 1. What we're going to do is we're going to do systems of nonlinear equations. So parabolas, ellipses, uh, some, some lines, and all these other conics that we just learned about. So we're looking to see where the lines intersect. So your solutions are at intersections. And they're all going to be x, y pairs. So your solutions are at intersections and they're going to be x, y pairs. We're going to do the first one here. It says solve a nonlinear system by the substitution method. So substitute means to replace. So you're basically just going to replace one variable with another. Now it's hard to solve these because there's an x and a y, so you want to get rid of one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this one here, 3x minus y equals 9. So that it says y equals. So I'm going to add this y over here. 3x equals 9 plus y. And I'm going to minus 9 minus 9. So I get y equals 3x minus 9. So now this one became y equals 3x minus 9. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take this equation. And you see where it says y equals? You are going to put it into that y. You're going to put it right into that y. That's substituting. So where that y is, I'm going to grab a highlighter. Where this is, where it says y equals, that's going to go right in for that y. And so then you're going to have x squared equals 2 times 3x minus 9 plus 10. So that's going to give you x squared equals 6x minus 18 plus 10. x squared equals 6x minus 8. So now I just have a quadratic. So uh, one thing I didn't point out, this is a parabola and this is a line. So if we just sketch a parabola and a line, so from the beginning, here's a parabola. Here's a line. If you look, there's one, two intersections. You could have one, but you could also have two. So we're basically seeing how many there are. So let's get back to the math here. Uh, now we're going to move everything to one side. So you have x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So I moved this and this to the other side. Now we're going to factor. So how do we factor this? It's going to be... What? 2, I'm sorry, 4 and 2, so x minus 2, x minus 4. So that means x equals 2 and x equals 4. So those are our x's. But before we're done, you always have to test and plug in. So what that means is we got to take these x's and plug them into this equation. 
You're going to pick whichever one you want, rewritten or non-rewritten. You're going to take the easy one. So I'm going to do it over here. We're going to do y equals 3x minus 9. So I'm going to do y equals 3. And now we're going to plug in the x's that we just got. Times 2 minus 9. And then you're going to do y equals 3 times 4 minus 9. So you got y equals 6 minus 9, y equals negative 3, and here you have y equals 12 minus 9, y equals 3. So that means your points are 2, negative 3, and 4, 3. The x's we got from solving, the y we got from plugging back in. And that is your first example. All right, example two, again, we're going to use substitution. Now, this is very algebraic. Now we have a line and a circle. So if you were to just draw a circle and put a line through it, there's probably going to be two solutions. So we're going to see. We're going to see something with one solution might look like this, where it just intersects right there. So that would be one solution. This would be two solutions. Something with no solutions could just be that. But that's just a little side note. We're going to do this one. It's pretty algebraic. So first we're going to take this x minus y equals 3. And you can now set it equal to x or y. It's easier to just make it y equals uh, x equals y plus 3. So that's what we're going to do, and that's what we're going to plug in. So this is going to go in for x, which is here. So that's why I'm going to write y plus 3 minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 4. So that y plus 3 came from this. So you substitute, you replace. So this is going to become y plus 1 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 4. So now here's where it gets a little tedious in algebraic, where you kind of have to do a bunch of work. So you got to square this y plus 1, so y plus 1 times y plus 1 plus y plus 3 times y plus 3 equals 4. So if you distribute, you're going to have y squared. You're going to have plus 1y plus 1y plus 1 plus y squared plus 3y plus 3y plus 9 equals 4. So that becomes y well, now we're going to really combine like terms. So I have 2y squared. I have 1, 2, 5, 8. So I have 8 plus 8y. And then I have 1, 2 is 10 equals 4. Uh, 1 and 9 is 10. Now we're going to subtract 4. Subtract 4. 2y squared plus 8y plus 6 equals 0. Now you're at the point where you need to factor, but before you factor, you should always check if you have a GCF, which is a greatest common factor. In this case, we do, it's two, so I'm gonna pull that out. I'm gonna get y squared plus four y plus three equals zero. And now you just have to factor the inside. Kind of forget about the two on the outside there because it was just factored out. So we're gonna have y plus one, y plus three equals zero. So this is y equals negative 1, and this is y equals negative 3. Now we just have to test the solutions. So we're going to test them right into here. So we're going to use this as our test. So our test and plug, we're going to use x equals y plus 3. And we're going to plug in the y's we just got. So we're going to have x equals negative 1 plus 3, and x equals negative 3 plus 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So our points are 2, negative 1. And we've got what, 0, comma, negative 3. And those are your two solutions. And that is example 2. All right. Example 3 is using the addition method, which is basically, I think we'll understand this word a little better. Lemon 
elimination. It's basically just elimination. So you want to eliminate one of the variables. Talking about these two equations, they're both conics. So two conics intersecting could look like this. That could be two conics intersecting. So again, how many solutions could we have? We could possibly have one, two, three, four. So we're going to test it out right now. So I'm going to rewrite the problem over here. So we're going to add the equations together in order to get rid of one of the variables. The only issue is in order to add the equations together to get rid of something, one of these has to be negative. Now, in order to use eliminations, the coefficients have to be the same. So this has a coefficient of 4. This has a coefficient of 1. We're not going to choose that just because we have to do more work than we need to. This has a coefficient of 1, and this has a coefficient of 1, so it makes sense to eliminate the y's. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom equation, and we're going to times it by negative 1. We're going to times it by negative 1. So that's going to give me negative x squared minus y squared equals negative 10. So if you see, I made every single part negative. All the parts of this problem are now negative. I'm going to scoot the top one back over. I didn't have to change that one. And now you're going to add the equations together. So what's negative 13? I mean, what's 13 plus negative 10? It is 3. Y squared plus negative y squared, those canceled, and this gives you 3x squared. And now you just solve for x, so it's a little simpler. Here you're going to divide by 3, divide by 3, x squared equals 1, square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 1. So those are our two x's, x equals negative 1 and positive 1. And now we have to plug that back in. So over here we're going to just plug and check. So we'll use x squared plus y squared equals 10. So first one I'm going to do in blue. So it's going to be negative 1 squared plus y squared equals 10. Negative 1 squared is 1. So you have 1 plus y squared equals 10. Minus 1, minus 1. y squared equals 9. That means y equals plus or minus 3. So that means you're going to have 2 for this one. You're going to have negative 1 comma 3 and negative 1 comma negative 3. Now you got to do the other one, which is 1. So 1 squared plus y squared equals 10. 1 plus y squared equals 10. It ends up being the same thing. y squared equals 9. y equals plus minus 3. So we have 1 comma 3 and then 1 comma negative 3. So that means these are our four answers, those two and those two. So your final answers are this and this. Now real quick, going back to the original problem, if you wanted to cancel out the x's, you'd have to multiply the bottom one by negative 4. The coefficients have to match. So if you get a problem like that for the, for the assignment, make sure you multiply the equation, just like I multiplied this one by negative 1, the coefficients already matched. I didn't have to do anything for, uh, like that for this one because I had a y squared and a y squared. And that is example three. All right, example four, last one here. We're going to use uh, elimination again. Elimination. Spelled that wrong, but whatever. So I'm going to make this top equation look like this one. So I'm going to move the x squared over. So I'm going to have y equals x squared plus 3. I'm going to minus x squared minus x squared. So I have negative x squared plus y equals 3. Now, why did I do that? I did that because this is a negative x squared and this is a negative x squared. So I can eliminate them. You can't eliminate them unless they're set up the same. So x squared plus y squared equals 9. I'll show you where I left that space in a second. Now for this one, I have negative x squared. I don't have a y squared term. I just have a 
plus y equals 3. So now you can see everything's lined up. The x squared is lined up, the y squared is lined up, and the y would be lined up. So that's why I moved it around. Now I'm going to eliminate. So you're going to add. So that and that's going to cancel. Still going to have a y squared. Still going to have a y. That's going to equal 12. Now I'm going to work with that. y squared plus y equals 12. Minus 12. Minus 12. y squared plus y minus 12 equals 0. Now you're going to factor it. So when you factor it, you should get y plus 4. This is a y. And then y minus 3. So that's factoring it. So your solutions are y equals negative 4, y equals 3. Now we have to test them. So we're going to test them using y equals x squared plus 3. So do this one in blue, this one in orange. So we'll do blue first, and I'm going to use y equals x squared plus 3. So first we have negative 4 equals x squared plus 3. Subtract 3, subtract 3. So negative 7 equals x squared, square root, square root. I'm just going to give you x equals the square root of negative 7. Now, we're not going to do imaginary numbers for this, but there would be no real solutions because you can't take the square root of a, a negative number. If you were going to, then uh, use negative solutions, and you pull out the i, and x would equal i root 7, but we're not going to do that. But since this is negative here, so I'm just going to get rid of that so it doesn't confuse anybody. Since that's negative... This one's going to be no good. Now we're going to do the other test. Uh, 3 equals x squared plus 3. Subtract 3, subtract 3. 0 equals x squared, x equals 0. So your final answer would just be 0, comma 3. And that would be the only point that works. So just looking at it, this is a parabola, this is a circle. So why is there only one solution? It would be like this. Something like that. That would be how it looks. So those are your four problems. Try the, now your assignment is to do the four check-in problems from lesson directions.